Welcome back to episode two of Keeper of the Dead, our little Pathfinder campaign that I am running with my friends. So as we left off last night, you had just found yourselves at the halfway inn in the midst of the vast wood, a, a vast wood, a, a large expansive wilderness <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, and you are you found the one tiny bit of civilization in the in the midst of endless woods all around you and you've encountered a couple of strange characters uh, uh, the innkeeper and his wife and the the figure of Rukio the antiquarian and his wooden golem um davenport sidekick davenport so and he's given you a, a task to perform to go into the midst of the vast wood and discover the potential site where a dangerous relic called the Void Scythe of Haramain can be found, which he believes has come into the possession of a deadly necromancer. So, as we last left off, you were all about to sort of tuck in for the night, unless you had any other business any of you wanted to attend before bed. I just want to sing the Gilligan's Island theme song. The innkeeper and his wife. Sorry. <laughs> That's sorry. That that's my old person moment for the, the night. Wooden man. And then there's the reference the going over my head completely. Uh. <laughs> oh man! Now I really uh. feel old. So you all I found another down gray hair today. Anyways, we settled down for the night. Settle yes. down for the night. Tuck in. Your accommodations are cozy but sparse. Relatively, it's not a well-to-do inn. It's just a nicely kept one. Sure. And the night passes without real obstacles. The, the storm is still raging through the night. You hear thunder, you see lightning through the window, and it's the rain continues through the duration of the night. But by the time it's morning, you've ran, managed to get a fairly decent amount of sleep, and the rain has abated. Not entirely, it's, it's kind of down to just an overcast sky with kind of a steady, gloomy trickle of rain here and there, but there's no storm anymore. But the the day has begun. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasant morning this is! Well, I got up early and I exercised already. I went out and, okay. and worked with my because it was sunny this morning. Yes, was it not raining anymore? No, no, not sunny. Not sunny. Gloomy, but not mm -hmm. raining. As but well. not raining. Okay, so I could go outside and exercise. So I went out and exercised. You swung been, my, pressing some logs. Yes, yeah. threw my axe around a little bit. <laughs> pretended to it's, stab a tree with my. It's pretty gross outside still. It, there's mud everywhere. The there's. All kinds of fallen tree branches all across the ground outside from the storm winds blowing and and there's a few um, of the smaller trees. Most of the trees in this area are huge, gigantic, like redwood type trees. But a few of the smaller ones have kind of fallen over here and there. It was a pretty bad storm. Well, I come in but, from the outside after running around a little bit and getting some exercise, and I'm absolutely famished. So I ask and keep her Tom for breakfast. Cool. But you don't find Tom. Tom is not currently present, but you okay. find his wife, Tibby, who says, Oh, of course, uh, we, we've got some eggs ready for you, fresh eggs. Uh, uh, Tom's out 10 in the garden at the moment, so, uh, but sit, sit down. Uh, I'll bring him out in a moment. I'll be right back. Thank you. She kind of bustles off into the kitchen and starts preparing breakfast for everybody. And then a few minutes later, she comes back. She hands you like a, a large, generously portioned plate of scrambled eggs. And there's a few um, breakfast potatoes. And there's no meat. There doesn't seem to be that much meat to go around. There was the venison you had last night. But other than that, there hasn't been much available to you. But you find the meal is definitely enjoyable. Hooray. I'm sure I make my way to some somewhere downstairs at that point. Or around yeah. that point. You smelled the food and came for it, didn't you? Pretty much. Yeah. It smells good. You can clearly tell that the Gold Meadows know how to make a good meal. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably... They're halflings, so... Yeah. Right. Very nice. <laughs> they give you the full halfling treatment. Yes. Like, they I obviously do. don't have a whole lot to work with, but what they do, they do well. They're generous with, yes. That's I, it. I like them because they're not taller than me. <laughs> or me. <laughs> they're, they're, 
Oh, they might actually be taller than me. Right? Nope. As dwarf? No? Okay. No, yeah. Yeah, dwarves, dwarves are, are like four, four and a half feet tall. Okay. Gnomes are Another? pretty close. But... Yeah. And they've made yeah. plenty of food for all of you. There's enough to go around for the entire bunch. So have um, we all gathered? Are we all... In my face. Yeah, I just kind of slumped downstairs while you guys weren't paying attention. You weren't looking in your ranger and so you snuck up behind us? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And... You hear before too long kind of a thudding up down the stairs and you see Rukior, the antiquarian, kind of approaches and he's like, ah, I smell delicious food. I am famished myself. Oh, it's been a long time since I've had a good meal. Well, since last night anyway, but you know, <laughs> he sort of plops himself down and helps himself to a very large plate. His companion, is following him, Davenport. Oh, good morning, my liege. Good morning, Davenport. Oh, good morning. It's it's a pleasure. I'm glad to see you haven't left yet. No, nope. uh, I was about to uh, draw up the plans. Well, I've had the plans drawn up for you already, but I do have a few um, recommendations for how to proceed if you'd care to hear them. Not that I'm any particular expert on such things. I wouldn't want to step on your toes, as it were, but perhaps I could be of some use in that regard. Um, I have never found an instance where I don't have or where I have too much information. Please. Ah, excellent. As an, as an academic, I quite appreciate that line of thought. But uh, uh, Davenport, get them the map. And Davenport opens up its kind of you see, it, its body has drawers in it. You saw the, the cabinets sort of thing open up with the, the, with the wine and the wine. glasses, but you also mm -hmm. see there are some panels here and there around its chest that open up. And it, it basically, Davenport is a humanoid dresser. And he's just got drawers built into his body. And he pulls out one, and there's a, a large scroll of paper. He places it in front of you and sort of stands back behind its master and then... Rukior says, ah, here's the map. You see, it, he's circled this small section you know, several miles off to the west. Mm -hmm. It's a, a bit of a journey. It's about two days, roughly, through difficult terrain, depending on how you go. Um, but there are three basic means of approach. You could go through the mountain pass, which is probably um, the most direct way but also rather treacherous in the sense that there are rumors of goblins in those mountains. Um, I wouldn't entirely recommend it. It's also a very difficult terrain, but the, it's, it's one possible route. The other route is you could possibly go through the, uh, the Gartooth wetlands. I definitely advise against that one. It's marshland everywhere, quicksand, very difficult terrain, but feasible. The other potential way is you could go by river. That's the direction I believe most of my men went. Uh, they, but they had to charter a boat, and you'd have to charter a boat yourself to go that way. It will still take you through part of the Gartooth wetlands, but not quite as much. The river will, will bow in such a direction as to, to make it a bit easier to get through. Um, there is no particular route that is not filled with danger. Uh, I understand that the river itself is rather perilous, and uh, the marshlands are also perilous. It's a rather perilous place. It's wild country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just ha I have I have the the castle anthrax thing stuck in my head now. <laughs> Full of peril. That's part of the reason why I believe it's been difficult for my men to return victorious. Hopefully, some of them are on their way. It's entirely possible, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is no easy path. If you choose to, to take the boat, uh, I believe there, there may be a boat or two docked at the, at the ferry, which is just off town, uh, a little road that goes off that way somewhere, and uh, there's a little boat shack there where you can rent a boat. Otherwise, uh, well, you see the different options at your disposal. Uh, well, I have no intention of slogging through a swamp, nor do I feel like climbing a mountain. A river seems a much easier way to go. 
I agree. I, it seems the fastest and most efficient. I hate goblins, so anywhere <laughs> not that way is great. <laughs> well, we don't know what we'll find. I think we also might find more clues as to what happened to our predecessors if we follow the river. Or it find is. out whatever got to them. Yes. Yes, indeed. Whatever and happened. as I said, by all means, if you encounter them, please bring them back or bring word back. I will reward you for that on its own. And mm -hmm. they will surely be very grateful as well. Okay, okay. I guess that settles it then. I think we're in unison. Wherever it is. Yep, we take the river. Well, are we ready to go and charter a boat now? I guess we have to settle our bill with um, the inn. With the innkeepers? The gold medals. With the gold medal family, yes. It's to be kind of is nearby, and she says, "Oh, uh, uh, certainly. Uh, for your stay and for the room and board, uh, it's a, um, a mere fifteen gold. I would say uh, it's no no great inconvenience. And and you can return. You can leave your things here if you like, or uh, if you don't like, uh, w you, the room will keep it open for you for when you get back." Mm -hmm. I'll pay her twenty gold. Yeah, I was going to say the same. I'll pay twenty as well. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're, you're all so kind. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm honored. Uh, uh, why, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. quite welcome. <laughs> you're most welcome. Thank you for your hospitality and for the mm -hmm. excellent food. And if there's anything that either I or my husband can do to, to make your stay any better before you leave, uh, let us know. And uh, if there's anything we can do to help you on your trip, let us know that as well. Uh, and if there's anything you'd just like to let us know, uh, just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> do you know do you if there are any bread? Go? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Do you happen to know? Oh, you, you'd like some bread? And cheese for the yes. for the road. I was going to ask that too. Oh, certainly, oh, I'll pack you each a sack of some provisions to take. It's a long journey you know, any way you go, so oh. I'll, I'll be sure to take care of you. Don't you worry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Nope. Anything else? No. And we know the boats nah. are ready at the dock, right? Or uh, mm -hmm. Tom mentioned that last night that the. We well, would I find passage they, by the dock. They, they come and they go. Uh, our, uh, our little outpost, there's not a lot of us. Uh, there's a, a few guards who stay around and a, a few mm -hmm. maintenance personnel. Uh, but uh, every few days, we'll, we'll get usually a small shipment of just random resources we might need. I don't know if anyone will be coming with a storm. So mm -hmm. you might not find anyone there, but you might find someone there. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. We'll figure it out. I'll take care of your stuff. And she okay. just kind of bustles back off into the kitchen and starts raiding the cupboards for things and putting stuff in some nice little lunch sacks for you. Sacks. <laughs> bag lunch from mom at the inn. Yeah. <laughs> is it a parchment bag lunch? Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Does it have Elvish bread in it? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Lambus. Oh my god. Lambus spread, yes. <laughs> she comes back and she's got large portions again of pretty much everything. There's a lot of the venison from last night and there's definitely bread and some dried vegetables as well. Just basically a little bit of everything they have on hand. They still don't have a lot. She also tosses in a few raw potatoes for you to potentially <laughs> roast at some point and a few onions and things for cooking purposes. Nice. Awesome. Fantastic. Yes, this is great. Thank you so much, Jibby. My pleasure. All right, shall we head out? Was there anything else we needed to know before we leave? I don't I, know. Uh, We've got food. Okay. Everybody's got their provisions and such and weapons and everybody's armed. Bows at the ready, Ranger. <laughs> yeah. Got <laughs> you got your magic. Oh, I'm going to do the Doctor Strange thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does, right? It's like cheating off of Spider-Man. Yes, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this Spider-Man that you speak of or Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Regina, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just—I'm just, I'm trying to speak in character, like 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I forgot. <laughs> I was thinking out of character. <laughs> Nerdin doesn't know anything about these things. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. All right. So we venture to the dock. And so you uh, all go outside. You, the rest of you who haven't been outside yet, you you kind of encounter the remnants of last night's storm, the large mud puddles in the road. And it has that kind of a smell uh, after a, a large rain of just kind of the earthy scent. There's kind of a steam wafting across the ground and it's getting to be morning. There's, you can see kind of a mist sort of dissipating and the trees are still kind of dripping. You can hear birds in the woods. It's, it's overall a pretty peaceful sound and kind of scenario. Okay. But you also remember just how scary the woods were last night, and you know in the wrong circumstance this could definitely be a place you don't want to be. Well, somebody's god or devil got a hold of this place last night. It looks a mess. <laughs> and you can also see last night when you came in, it was so dark and so windy and so rainy, you couldn't really see anything except for the inn itself. You can see there are a couple of other buildings. There's like a mm -hmm. A, a few shack type buildings off to the side, what looks like some kind of a, a small lumber mill, um, like, like a, a little barn and a, and a stable. The stable's empty currently, but it, it looks equipped to handle a fair number of horses and a cart at least or two. And you see just, it's you can see it's, it's a larger settlement than you first realized. There's also what looks like a, a guard post off to the side. And a little road that kind of branches off. You see the main road, uh, the old russet road that you came in on, that goes through the little settlement and beyond to the destination. And you can see a little path that kind of leads off to the forest in the direction that you were told would be where you'd find the docks. All right. Well, towards the onwards docks. to the docks. Yes. You go down the path, and it's a it's a wide enough path. It's a fair sized road for bringing in carts and things on, but it's definitely smaller than the main road for sure. And it doesn't look like it's traveled that often or that uh, thoroughly. And it goes off about a half mile away. You can kind of see the the little outpost disappear behind you, and you can hear the sound of of quickly rushing water ahead of you, and you. Um, as you continue, you finally sort of reach this little dock area. You can see the river is swollen. The water is rushing really, really fast because of the rain the previous night. It's The river is basically flooded the banks. It's definitely um, not a particularly safe looking river to be boating on, but it, it also doesn't look like it, it would be necessarily deadly you also see so it's just kind, kind of, of dangerous yeah you see it's it's not really a proper um dock there's kind of like a, a place where a boat would be beached mm -hmm. but you currently don't see a boat you see what looks like the wreckage of a boat and the wreckage of a couple of boats that have just kind of washed up on shore. Well, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk down to see if I can find anybody that might need help. Okay. I'm going to walk down you... to see if there's anybody you know, selling boats. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're just not looking hard enough. <laughs> Are you going upstream or downstream? Hmm. Well, I want to go with the rest of the party. Um, so I'm going toward the wreckage of the boats or myself right. to see well, if there's any means actual help. From well, and we might find what happened to our predecessors as well, so this might maybe. be the boat that they were on, or give us a clue as to where they went to All right. kind of lead us. Alright, well, yeah. Let's go. All right. roll, roll some investigation checks, then. Investigation? Or so perception, perception, I have, perception. perception. Yeah. I have knowledge, nature as well. I don't know if that's that would be it. It would just be perception. Okay, okay. Okay. Dark investigation be D and D. <laughs> this is not D and D. I know. Just reminding everybody else. 
<laughs> this is totally not D and D. Still not D and D. <laughs> not D and D TM. I got a twenty six. <laughs> oh, I have uh, I okay. have a modified fifteen. Nice. I have a modified twenty one. Hang on, let okay. me figure this out. Oh. Carry the two. Shoot. <laughs> So, oh, what'd happens. you get? On, what'd you get on your uh, on your d twenty roll? Um, um, a nine. I'm trying you got to figure the nine. out my mod modifiers. Well, well, start by adding your wisdom. Your wisdom. Your wisdom. Well, this is where this this digital scroll okay. down. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve. All right. Okay. My wisdom is twelve. Uh, you you look around. You, you oh, don't really so you find. Add much of interest. Uh, Hargath, though, you, you kind of, you investigate the the wreckage of the boat, and you you see it, it doesn't necessarily look new. It looks like potentially sort of flotsam that was probably carried downstream quite a distance. So it doesn't look like this was from any boats that were recently docked here. Um, but you do see footprints in the sand nearby the wreckage, where it looks like they've been sort of rummaged through not terribly long ago. So somebody maybe was looting them. Do I happen, can I tell which way the footprints come from or they, go away to? They kind of go all over the place. This person's clearly spent quite a bit of time picking through this wreckage, and they appear to go downstream. Um, I'm sorry, Izzy, what's your character's name? Uh, Freya. Freya, what do you make of these tracks? That's that should be a survival roll. Yes. Yeah, survival is all things woodsy. Ooh, I have a good survival too. I have so five, six plus six in survival. Oh, Ooh. I have plus so, nine. <laughs> Nice. I so, see you. Yep. Cool. So roll your. Both of you could probably roll your d20s, and then we'll just take whoever's higher. Oh, I rolled a sixteen. I rolled nice. a seventeen. I rolled a seventeen, but you get twenty-five. So both of you survive the hell out of those tracks. <laughs> those they, dangerous tracks. The, the tracks. It's definitely the tracks of one person. Um, they look like heavy boots, probably human. Should we follow okay. them? Follow the Yellow Brook Road? To the group. What do you guys think? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. What was that? They're leading downstream. They're leading Just downstream. downstream. And, our, and our benefactor told us that the, that the place is downstream, right? Yeah, so upstream wouldn't make any sense. So. Okay. So let's just go ahead and we'll follow these. We'll send you two ahead. It, just so you... <laughs> Well, let me, you know, high survival yeah. skills. Yeah, high survival skills. Like, if you all are going to go ahead and well, uh, follow the tracks, uh, I don't want to go ahead and be in the lead and screw up anything for you. No, you can be in the lead when we're talking to old fat guys in the inn. That's good. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's fine. your thing. Yeah. I'm the wine connoisseur here. Yes, exactly. You are, you are the wine drinker. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> of all the things that I could ever roll a 20 on. <laughs> Okay, so to follow the tracks, you'd need to roll another survival check. Okay. Right. Oh, and of course I get an 11 this time, so that's 17. That's okay. Uh, I also got an 11! <laughs> yeah, but yours is a 20. Yours so is a modified 20. 20. Yeah. So that's not bad. It's good enough. You, you can follow the tracks pretty easily. It doesn't look like whoever left them was really trying to conceal them. Mm -hmm. um, they just And they just follow along the, the shoreline. It's a bit hard to follow here and there where the river is swollen past the banks and there isn't any sand, um, but you're able to kind of follow like the bent branches and, and reeds off to the side of the river. It goes downstream for quite a bit. You find um, kind of places where trees have fallen into the river and pieces of wood were tangled in there from boat wreckage. And uh, it looks like they've been sorted through as well. You follow the trail for about a mile and a half. And you, you finally come across, um, you, you can sort of see over the shore, um, kind of over the bank of the shore, 
uh, a man, a human man, um, dressed in kind of a long coat um, with kind of some fingerless gloves. He's got a hat, uh, kind of like a bulky kind of bowler type hat. And he's just sort of picking through this these this mass of kind of tangled planks that look like it went, once was part of a boat. He's just kind of rummaging through it and seeing what he can kind of find. He doesn't really seem to be paying any attention to you. Charisma? <laughs> yeah, our charming Who, member. Who's got charisma? <laughs> it would not be me. <laughs> would you like I to do. go talk to our gentleman in the dark coat? <laughs> I mean, he looks scary, though. <laughs> I can you to like I can lead I suppose. Yeah, well, I guess I can go. Just you know, don't leave me because you know. I won't leave you. you. Because maybe he's got, you. you know, maybe yeah. he's got a big hammer in his coat or something. <laughs> he is armed. He has what looks like a heavy crossbow slung over his back. Swell. He's not expecting us, so we should probably. Although I don't know, four of us traveling through. He might have heard us really coming. Surprise, the dark stranger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, give me a lay of the land here. Like we're on a riverbed. Like I'm assuming that it's relatively flat, and you can probably see forward for miles. Am I, well, am I wrong? The river, the river twists and turns a little bit, and there's okay. since the banks are over swollen, the the river's higher than it normally would be. So, kind of in order to follow the the curve of the river, you've kind of been sort of partway in the woods. Sure. Kind of weaving in and out of the trees, so you have some concealment. You're you're not okay. obvious where you are, okay. so he may not have seen you. He may have just have seen you and not cared. Okay. Yeah, we could just try saying hello from here. Yeah, that's that's what that, that was. That was pretty much what I was going our, to do. Yes. So, call out. <laughs> that's what she actually does. <laughs> Right. It's also it's also worth noting that the river is very loud and very it's it's kind of it's a roaring river, so it's entirely possible that you weren't heard. Okay. Hello there. Hello. He kind of like kind of looks up over his shoulder. You you can you can see he's got kind of like a he's got this kind of a sideburn thing going on, this kind of a mutton chop beard. Okay. And he kind of looks up at you and he's like I wave. Oh hello. Hello there. Hello, pleasure how to meet you, you good, sir. On this fine day, how are you doing? Fantastic. What brings you out here in the middle of nowhere? Um, we're looking for some folks. Well, I happen to be a folk, so pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <sighs> so, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and extend extend a hand. My name is Savarka, and these are my companions. He puts out his own hand, and he's got large, calloused fingers, fingerless gloves. He, he shakes your hand, and he says, Dredger, happy to meet you. Ah, fantastic. So we are we are going ahead and searching for another party of folks that were wandering through here, like, eh, probably about, well, what was it, a week, two weeks ago, looking to my companions for uh, for confirmation. Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe that was what he said, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, group yeah, group of men. No, full group of men. I think it was a compliment of somewhere between seven to ten seven to ten people. You wouldn't happen to have uh have seen anybody come through here. Well, I've seen a people here and there a few times. Uh, not a, a group that large, but I also don't stick around here more than I have to. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a native of these parts. I just come here and there every once in a while. Came out here to see if there was anything good swept up by the storm, and so far nothing of particular interest. But still looking. You never know what you'll find around here. Ah, uh, yes, a treasure hunter you are. Well, I like to think of myself as a man of fortune. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's. Uh, that's that's what we were hoping for. We were hoping for some good fortune today. So it's all. Gonna... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going to need to go ahead and press onwards. But um, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Uh, this what was it that, uh, that that they were looking for? They were looking for some sort of like, some sort of temple or drown yard, correct? Uh, I've never heard of anything like that. Uh, 
I don't pay much attention to local affairs, but uh, I would say, how long did you say this ago this was? Like a, a week or so? We, a week or two ago, it was a large, large band of, uh, large band of mercenaries. Um, their, uh, their owner is getting a little bit antsy. I think he thinks that they slipped off with his money. So we're going to go ahead and try to find him for him. I wouldn't put it past him, you know the type. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say this boat right here, what I'm picking through right here, it looks like it probably wrecked around that time ago. You can tell by how waterlogged it is. So it might be the same one. No, okay. couldn't say. All right. And these tracks that we were following, are they yours or were they here when you got here? Which way did you come? come? He looks around and says, oh, well, I guess they would be mine. Uh, I came up from upstream. Oh, okay. I came in a boat. Yeah, do you know where we could charter a boat? Charter a boat? Oh, um, might catch well, a ride with somebody. I might be in the market myself if you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a small boat, but it got me here, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Should be room for the lot of you. Can't say it could fit a whole platoon of soldiers, if that's what you tend to find, but I could at least carry you lot wherever you need to go. Yeah, well, once we go ahead and we find them, Hopefully we can, you know, just convince them to come back with us. I, we have a way with words, and she has a way with, you know, putting axes in people's faces. <laughs> I can tell by the look of you. You look like you're a capable person. Mm -hmm. I respect that. So, my good man, um, we're yeah, we're just looking for some transport. Well, I could say. Uh, where, where, where are you planning on going exactly? You got any particular destination? I pull out a map and I point to the place which I'm really assuming good. that we circled or X'd or something. Yeah, he marked it. Davenport, Davenport, Davenport marked it for, it. Marked it for yeah, you. Yeah, Davenport and marked it. Yeah. Dredger takes the map and he kind of looks at it, and you can, you can tell he's he's from the way he's looking at the map. He's definitely he knows his way around. He's probably seen this map or similar map similar. many times. He says, "Well then." That is a particular destination, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think our charge just went up. <laughs> I suppose I could be persuaded to take you down that far, but I don't normally. I don't like to get too close to the Gartu Marsh. It's a there's things in there, but I could say uh, to risk my hide and my livelihood, perhaps. Uh, Two thousand. Two thousand, my good man. Be reasonable. I don't think I am reasonable. I think you can. I think you can probably go ahead and you can probably go ahead and knock that off for for fifteen hundred or down to fifteen hundred for us. I'm gonna go ahead and try to charisma my way out of this. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. Thank you, charisma. <laughs> 19 plus 3 is... No, no, 19 plus 5 is 24. Okay. Yeah, he, he kind of, like, looks at you and he's like... Well... He, he looks down at the wreckage of the boat and he says, like... Well, this is probably a bust, I would say, in more ways than one. I guess I don't have much choice if I want to turn a profit for the day, but... And uh, it looks like you all know how to handle yourselves decent enough if we run into trouble, so I suppose I could be persuaded to do it for 1500 15, Okay. Thank you, my good man. I knew that you were a reasonable person. All right. You got to pay me up front, though. I don't know if I'll see the end of it. Mm. Okie dokie. Let me go ahead. We'll gather our things. Come, folks. We're gonna get into a huddle. It's gonna be great. Right. <laughs> so we gotta come up with uh, with fifteen hundred bucks. I, it's the best I could do. We talked him down. Yeah. <laughs> talked him down from two thousand. <laughs> Just in case y'all weren't paying attention. Right. So how much would that be if we split it four ways? If we split that four ways, oh god, that's seven fifty divided divided by two. It's three twenty five a person, I believe, if I, my math is correct. And I am 375. Okay. 
I am, act I am actively terrible at math. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Calculator. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, like, I'm surprised that like, I got within 50. You, got <laughs> you were in the ballpark. Yeah. All right, well, I think that's fair for each of us to, to pony up 375. Okay. Green? Yeah. So we can go ahead and make that happen. Okay. So you go ahead and you collect your, your gold pieces and pool them all together and mm -hmm. you pay the man and he says, well then, pleasure doing business with you already. Uh, follow me. Mm -hmm. Kind of all right, leads let's you do back it. in the direction you came from going back upstream. Mm -hmm. You kind of slog your way through the woods a little ways back up the shore. Or you, you pass by where the, the dock is and you go further upstream than that a little ways and um, kind of about the same distance upstream that you traveled downstream, about a mile and a half, you find kind of a place where the, the river sort of swells into this kind of a little, uh, kind of a little grotto type area where the uh -huh. river is, is raging by and there's kind of this more calm area off to the side and a, a more calm pool. And in that pool, there's a, a small, smallish uh, rowboat. It's not the smallest rowboat that you could imagine, but it's definitely going to be a cramped fit for all of you. And in the back, you can see kind of like this lump of, of various wreckage that looks like it's been kind of scavenged. That seems to be his livelihood, is just scavenging wreckage. Okay. Sunken ships and boats and things. And he kind of pops you all in and he says, well then, let's get going then, shall we? It's a bit of a ways, uh, but... Uh, I think we can get there by nightfall. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Let's do this. Okay. So you all pile in the boat and you all begin right. your treacherous journey downstream, where we will resume in our next episode. <laughs>